When learning how to build sites using Drupal, it is fundamental that you have a good understanding of content types and fields. Because honestly, when you think about it, a Drupal site is really just a list of content types, and that's it. So in this video, what I wanna do is quickly show you, and for some people, introduce you to content types and how they work, and fields. Okay, because once you understand how everything works, even, even if you have a high level understanding, other things make sense. And in the following videos, we will create an actual blog content type and attach fields to it. But in this video, I just wanna give you a proper overview. Okay, so to manage content types, what you need to do is click on structure in the admin toolbar and then click on content types. And from this page, you can create new content types or you can manage existing ones. Now, if you install Drupal using the standard installation profile, the profile creates two content types out of the box, article and basic page. And basic page, as the description says, can be used for static content pages, such as about us page, privacy policy, terms and conditions. And I often leave this basic page in. Then you have article. So the article can be used for kind of blog posts, but we will create an actual uh, blog content type later on. So to manage content types, what you do is click on the down arrow under operations. And from here, you have a few options. You can manage fields, you can manage form display, you can uh, manage the display of the content type, and you can also edit it. So what I'll do is just quickly Click on edit. Now from this page, you can change a few things. You can change the name, but you can't change the machine name. That is set when a content type is created. You can change the description if you like, but I, I often just leave it as it is. And then further down, you have these vertical tab options. And from here, you can configure a few extra things such as changing the title label Perhaps you don't want title to be called title, you want it to be called name, for example, Well, you can easily change the label. You can even set the preview, how it should work. Should it be required, optional, or, or you can fully disable it. I often disable it because it's not that useful. And then you have these default publishing options. Should it be published by default? Should it be promoted to home page, uh, create new revisions and so on. Then under display settings, should it display author and date information? You can easily tick this on or off. If this is ticked, it'll display submitted by author and then add in a particular date. And then you have the menu settings. This allows an editor to add a page or article directly to some menu and from here you can see that only main navigation is allowed so an editor will only be able to add it to the main navigation which appears right up the top of the page so that is a quick overview of the content type let's look at the fields now just click on manage display and from here, you can see a list of available fields on a content type. Now, before I move on, another way to think of a content type is really a way of grouping fields. That's how I like to think about it because a field has three parts to it. It stores content, so it stores a value. It allows an editor to enter in a value or content into the field through a widget and then it renders the value to the end user through a formatter. So from here, you create the actual field and you can manage existing ones or you can create a new one. And then if you click on manage form display, this is where you control the widgets. So what the editor will see when they are, when they are entering in content. So I could reorder the fields so that title is below body. I could even change the widget. So you can see that a few fields only have a single widget. But then if you look at tags, for example, you'll see that the tags can be displayed as a select list, checkbox or radio button, 
autocomplete, autocomplete style tags. And if you install other contrib modules, they will offer other widgets. And then if we click on manage display, from here, you can control how the field will be rendered to the end user. So by default, the image will be displayed first, then the body field, then tags, links, and comments. You can even add or remove labels, and then each field will have a formatter. So this is similar to a widget, but a widget is used to display some type of form element, whereas a formatter is used to output the rendered value. So let's take image for example, you only have one formatter, which is image, which is correct. But then for body field, you have trimmed, default, trimmed or summary. And if we select, say trimmed, you'll see that this formatter has an option. So we can set the trimmed limit. And again, other contrib modules will often ship their own formatters. So let's just edit that and make sure it's set to default. All right, now that you have a basic understanding of a content type and its fields and widgets and formatters and so on, let's create an actual article so you can see everything in action. So to create an article, just click on content, add content. And from here, you will have a list of all available content types. In our case, where we only have two, which is article and basic page. So let's just select article. And what I'll do is just add in a title, test title, the very original and test body. And these are the widgets, okay? Then if I go further down, you will see that for the tags field, we had an autocomplete widget. And what this allows you to do is that it will allow you to select a predefined tag if it's been created, or you can create a new tag just by entering in a tag from here. But as you can see, nothing is appearing because we don't have any tags. So what I'll do is just add in the two tags, Drupal and WordPress, and you just separate it by a comma. And then Drupal's smart enough to grab that string and know that Drupal and WordPress are two separate tags and it'll simply create the tags. And then here with the image field, we, we can simply upload an image. And what I'll do is I'll just click and drag this Drupal icon and give it an alt tag. There we go. But before I publish, take note of what's on the right. From here, you can control the menu settings. So if you want to add a menu item to the, to the main navigation, you can do so from here. Even the comment settings, you can open or close them. So this allows you to create a URL alias, and then you have authoring information and promotion options. So I'll just close all of that, and then click on save and publish. So previously we saw the widgets. Now we see the field formatters. And as I mentioned previously, formatters are used to render out a field's value. So you can see that we have the image here and we have the test body and we have the tags and then finally we have the comments below the tags. I hope now you have a better understanding of content types, fields, formatters and widgets. And honestly, most of your site building will revolve around these, these things. Because when you think about it, a Drupal site or any website is really just a list of items. And that's where you'll spend most of your site building effort. So in the next video, we'll look at creating a blog content type.